few Nebraska farmers and representatives from the Nebraska Department of Agriculture recently returned from Europe where they were helping to promote this state's beef industry. Nebraska exported more than $142 million worth of beef and beef products to the European Union in 2015. The U.S. and the 28-member EU are currently in discussions related to the Transatlantic Trade and Investment Partnership, or TTIP. Earlier this week, we talked with Nebraska Department of Ag Director Greg Ibaugh about the recent trip and about how the TTIP trade deal might help exports. We, we just uh, returned from Europe about a week ago that uh, we had been participating in a trade mission with USMEF that was funded by the Nebraska Corn Board to promote Nebraska beef in uh, the Europe marketplace. Describe the uh, buyers of Nebraska beef over there. So mainly who we work with in that marketplace are the importers and the major distributors. And then they uh, do events that we participate in where they bring in some of their customers, which would be you know, butcher shops and restaurants and uh, those people that have the direct consumer interface. But it's about telling the Nebraska beef story, talking about uh, the farm and ranch families, that uh, produce the beef we sell, how it's fed locally grown feeds, a lot of it's locally developed genetics with um, you know nearly a century and a lot of families of that history of producing that product. What are the other concerns that consumers have uh, in Europe? Well you know Europe is a, an interesting market in that they have a lot of NGO activity and a lot of those NGOs have concerns about uh, GMOs and and hormones and uh, all kinds of uh, green type issues that they bring to play. And uh, you know, I think that consumers maybe are, the European consumers may be less complicated. And I think at the end of the day, they're really interested in taste, quality, and price. And yeah. that's something that we're very competitive on. Can you describe the, the competition between uh, Nebraska and US beef and other countries that try to supply that marketplace? Well, you know, Europe is, uh, you know, food's a, a kind of a romantic thing for them there in, in a way and that they really get into their food and how it's prepared and even where it's from and the story behind it. One of the events we did in Dusseldorf had uh, a comparison that was sponsored by the importer where we uh, taste tested Irish beef. Australian, uh, two kinds of Australian Wagyu and just plain corn fed, U.S. beef and Japanese Kobe beef all at the same time. And, uh, you know, at the end of the event, and I'm not just prejudiced here, but uh, the U.S. beef really did stand out, uh, the flavor and texture that both the dry aged and the wet aged product that they um, offered were excellent. What's the relevance of TTIP, uh, that trade partnership and this trip and trying to work with consumers there? So the first priority, of course, is to get uh, TPP passed. And, uh, and we're hoping that sometime in the lame duck session, we can get that accomplished. But in the conversations there, they're very much watching TPP because a lot of the agricultural interests, especially, and the meat trade is very interested in TTIP because they see that as an opportunity to grow trade, grow the amount of business they can do. And of course, the more pounds of uh, beef and pork they were able to bring in, the more money they're able to make on the margin. Finally, uh, in the late fall, you'll be heading again to China. Tell me about that trip and what you'll try to cover there. Well, the governor's announced that November we'll be uh, working with DED and Department of Ag together to put together a trade mission. Uh, DED will focus on businesses that uh, want to export as well as that may be looking to uh, position themselves uh, to have a manufacturing arm in China and or bring investment back. On the ag side, uh, China is a complicated market for us. They're a big important market, buy lots of food, in some years almost half of U.S. ag exports go to China. But you know they uh, don't behave like uh, a normal trading partner. They have uh, changed the rules on GM events or uh, delay approvals or you know sometimes let things through and then decide not to on, on both the meat side and the GM side. So having a discussion about how we normalize and you know become uh, uh, good trading partners is also something that's going to be important on that trip.